All righty. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Welcome to um, our webinar today. We will be focusing on the Latitude products. Here with us today, we've got Bob, Ben, and Richard. Um, we've got a pretty great team, so be ready with all of your questions. We'll be ready to go, but quickly, I'll run over some housekeeping before we get started. So the first is, you know, this is a Zoom meeting, so please stay on mute while speakers are presenting. And this is being recorded. I'm sure you saw that in the top little bit right as you joined. Um, but we do record this so we can post it up later and have it as a resource on all of our sites. Um, if you're comfortable, have your camera on. We love to see your smiling faces. And then it's a little less awkward for us presenting just being on camera. So then we can see you and see how you're interacting. If you have a question that you would like to come off mute for, please use the raise hand function. Um, and we will unmute you so you can ask your question live. Last but not least, have fun. This is a good time. You get a lot of good information here. Um, most of you are frequent flyers, so you know this is your time to ask as many questions as you got. We've got a really good team here to answer all of your questions and a whole other team in chat. Um, so we'll hopefully get to every single one of your questions. Like always, we've got our survey at the end of the event. Um, that link will be posted in chat towards the end and will be sent to you via email. So make sure you fill that out. We wanna know how we did today. We wanna know what else we can do for you. Um, we really, really value your feedback. We, this community is for you. Um, so this is, this is really what we want. This is what we need um, to make the community as optimal for you. Just a reminder, we've got some upcoming events. So on May 4th at 9 a.m., I know it's not our typical time, um, but at 9 a.m. Central, we will become covering the Optiplex series. This one's pretty exciting. We've got the team from Taiwan um, that does the Optiplex on this webinar for you. So if you've got super technical questions, this is your time to come and ask specifically about the Optiplex. So we hope to see you there. And then a week after that, we've got Masoot joining us again on May 11th from 11 a.m. to 12, our regular timing, um, to cover the um, custom update catalog. So best practices for that. If you've never heard about it, definitely come. Um, you'll get a lot of great information. If you've got any questions, ask your questions. Uh, we hope to see you there as well. And then if you're going to be at Dell Tech World, join us. Um, we have a party and networking reception at Libertine Social from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That is Vegas time, um, so it depends on where you are, but if you're in Vegas, we will have that live. It will be super exciting. We've got the tech rally. We're going to do some trivia, lots of giveaways. Of course, it's Vegas. We will be providing free drinks, so if you're there, might as well join us. It's a good time. Um, so that will be really fun. We hope to see you there. We want to get to know the community a little bit better. And this is a great networking opportunity to meet uh, not only us that help run the community, but also a bunch of Dell representatives and people you can use as resources for your business. And follow DTUC on Twitter. Um, as we've announced over the past couple months, we are bringing together Dell client community and the Dell Technologies Unified Workspace. Um, into one community called the Dell Technologies User Community. We want you all there. Um, the Twitters for Dell Client Community and Unified Workspace Community will no longer exist. So if you want to keep those updates, if you want to stay active on social with us, make sure you move on over. Um, we will be getting rid of those tomorrow. So now's your chance. If you're on Twitter, um, hopefully not during this webinar and we keep you entertained, but next time you're on Twitter, Come follow Detox so you can stay well informed. And now I'm done talking. I am going to hand it over to our speakers. Today we will have uh, Bob, Rich, and Ben. Bob, I'll let you introduce yourself, but the floor is yours. That sounds good, Jack. Thanks, man. I've seen uh, I've seen some bad puns, some Star Wars jokes, talking about booze in the chat. So this should be a good group. <laughs> uh, let me uh, pull up some information to share with you guys. So. Thanks for, thanks for taking some time to hang out with us. Uh, my name is Bob Furrow. I'm the product marketing lead on the Latitude team here at Dell. Uh, we're going to be joined by Rich and Ben here in a minute, a bunch of folks uh, to help out in the chat as well. Um, feel free to throw questions in there. We have time for Q&A at the end as well, so let's, let's talk. But um, I think we got maybe, maybe three goals today. Uh, first, just want to kind of level set, take a couple minutes to let you know how and why we're bringing this new technology to market, kind of the jobs that 
these new latitudes are designed to tackle. Um, then we're going to we're going to run through the latest portfolio. And that's that's really the main goal of today, I think, just to kind of show you all of the new innovation, all of the new technologies, some pretty exciting stuff. Um, and then third, save some time for Q&A. So let's let's just get into it, guys. Um, so th there there are very fast moving challenges that we're all on our side working to try to stay ahead of you as well. Um, we all obviously live through the move and adoption to, to hybrid work styles. Um, there's emerging technologies like, like AI and this ramp of emphasis on the overall employee experience. And all of that kind of is, is the backbone of the experience tenants that, that, that Latitude is trying to deliver against for you. Um, and Looking at the work that's being done within within our customers' organizations, you know, you you likely have team members doing several different types of work. Um, you know, from from executives really building the organization with just differentiated needs around collaboration and transitioning across workspaces to to, to team leaders and directors that are really collaborating and connecting relationships all day long. Um, then there's, you know, there's kind of a unique group, maybe about 15% of the workforce. They may be designing your company's product. They may be building bridges. They're creating, um, and they've got very unique needs around enhanced uh, power and specific application performance. Um, and then we kind of have this whole group of, of folks running the business um, just in new ways, you know, accountants, procurements, even, you know, think like call centers, and they have unique needs in productivity, but also across the ecosystem. And each one of these kind of presents a challenge for IT to go address, to go solve for. And each one of these represents a group that we're designing for here at Dell and our products. And I, you know, I hope that'll kind of come through as we, as we cover the specific products. And we'll walk you through how, how, how each of the latitudes kind of tackles several of these with, with, new, with new ways and new technology in, in 2023. Um, so let's let's keep moving. We we saw for a good chunk of the, of the prior workforce groups with you know those those unique use cases and experience. We solved those a lot of them with Latitude, um, Latitude notebooks. Not all, you know. If you think of those specialists, those are our precision class workstations that just need immense compute. Um, there are folks who are working in in the dirt and outside all day long, and they need a rugged device. There are folks who don't move still, and desktops great solution uh, for some. But Latitude does tackle a bunch throughout the portfolio. So let's go just one click further on Latitude, and then we'll kind of get into the portfolio. But I don't know. I just wanted to kind of, we thought, we thought we'd bring you some, some just kind of our, our, our tenants. What sets Latitude apart? Um, there are obviously, there are a bunch of laptops in the market. At Dell alone, we have several brands, and it probably can get somewhat dizzying for customers. But we wanted to kind of level set on, on Latitude for you here today. And I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on these, maybe one, um, but across the portfolio, you're going to see um, huge investments and in innovations just in the design of the products. Um, and we'll show you those. Uh, we have several, several enhancements and some, some world's first too, when it comes to collaboration. So connecting us to each other as we're farther and farther apart. Um, security, security is probably a, a separate eight hour webinar, you know, that's a whole posture and conversation. Um, but when it comes to just the hardware, what's shipping to you out of the factory, what you get um, from protecting the BIOS to protecting end user credentials to the safe supply chain, where is it coming from? Um, you are getting security on every latitude out of the factory in the package just that, that is unmatched. Um, and we won't go too far into this today, but our, our intelligence suite, we call it Dell Optimizer, that's going to continue to grow this year. We've got some exciting features that, that we'll, we'll mention a couple of, but that'll continue to be an emphasis for us. Um, and then across the portfolio, we're going to show you several places where we are, we are the world's smallest, the world's lightest uh, commercial devices that we're pretty excited about. Um, you know, anything on this page, if anything stands out and you want to hear more about it, Throw a question in the chat or we can bring it up at the end, but um, just wanted to kind of bring us back to home base. But one place that that we are absolutely committed to, um, committed to, I'll say, out innovating our competition um, is in the realm of sustainability. Uh, and I wanted to just show you a couple things here. Um, 
we have some some long distance goals you may or may not be aware of as as we approach them in 2030 we've already met several of those within the latitude portfolio um, one of which is that latitude packaging is made of 100 percent recycled or re renewable materials and is 100 percent recyclable um, that's and it looks really cool now if you haven't gotten a new latitude in in the last year or so but um that packaging is is a 2030 goal that we've met um, and then you can see kind of at the bottom, and we'll hit on a few of these as we look at each individual product, but there are places we're trying to trying to innovate within each of the models within the portfolio. How do we introduce more sustainable materials into these and deliver on all of all of those design tenants as well? Um, but then we're also we're also looking at, you know, are there new ways that we can approach what has been pretty consistent over the last few decades in that commercial commercial notebook? You know, can we make a device that has, interchangeable, highly serviceable parts that maybe you can use it for a longer period of time than, than the traditional three year, whatever, whatever refresh cycle. Um, there's a whole team of brilliant people on our side that are trying to comb, comb for new materials that we can pull into our devices. And it's, it's pretty exciting work. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you that for a second. But um, with that, let's, let's jump into the portfolio. Um, so there, there is the 2023 portfolio. Uh, look at that. They're beautiful. I'm paid by Dell. Don't take my word for it. Go buy a bunch. Um, but um, this is an entirely new lineup this year. Uh, full, full redesign across the board of the Latitude portfolio. So each one is brand new. But we also have kind of some net new offerings that we haven't really had before. We'll show you those. Um, but from 13 inch to now 16 inches across four series of solutions, we've got an entirely new set of, of offerings to show you. Um, so I'll step aside now for a minute and introduce you to Ben Conlon, one of our, our launch managers. Ben is gonna walk us through Latitude 9000 and 7000 series, everything that's new there. Um, then we'll bring in Rich to talk about Latitude 3000 and 5000 series mm -hmm. and throw some questions at us as we go. Ben? Sounds good, thank you. While, while I'm doing a quick intro, you can kind of see a quick animated view of our new Latitude 9442-in-1. Uh, so get a quick look at this, but I'll show some close-ups and some more pictures here in a minute. So as Bob said, my name is Ben Conlon. I am a Latitude Products Launch Manager, um, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here talking about our new 9442-in-1 and then our uh, redesigned 7000 series and some of the really exciting things that we have going on there. Um, we'll wait till the animation stops. There you go. So uh, so first, looking at the 9440, you might see the photo on the right and say, that's not a latitude. It doesn't look like anything you're used to seeing in the latitude space before. Um, and, and you'd be right in that it, it is unlike what we're normally um, doing from a design perspective in the latitude space. This is a, a completely different design kind of look um, than what you're used to seeing. Um, and for a lot of good reasons. So this is our 9440. It's our flagship product. It's the the premium top of the line experience that you can get with Latitude. Um, and as Bob teased earlier, there are some world's firsts that are going on here um, in the 9,000 space, as well as some of the things you'll see carry over to the 7,000 presentation that I'll do next. Um, so first is the world's first haptics collaboration touchpad. It's a bit of a mouthful um, and a bit of a tongue twister, um, but really exciting from a user perspective. Um, I'll actually talk about that on the next slide when we get there in a minute. Um, but essentially, think about that as a customizable um, and immersive experience with your touchpad, a little bit different than what you're used to seeing in more of a, a static or a basic click pad experience. Um, the 9440 also brings the world's first zero lattice keyboard um, with battery saving mini LED backlit um, technology sitting behind the keys. Um, so we'll talk about those separately um, when I get to a slide in a minute here. But as you can see, the keyboard here is completely different than what you're seeing um, in, a, in a normal Latitude keyboard. Um, the keys are essentially all the way up against each other. They're much larger than what you're used to seeing. And you can see the top firing speakers kind of sitting off to the side there, um, which we'll also address here in a minute. Um, this is the world's smallest 14-inch commercial PC. So th think massive screen-to-body ratio, extremely narrow bezels. 7% more viewing area than what you're used to getting. And what I think is coolest is that it's a 14 inch screen essentially fit into what traditionally has been a 13 inch chassis. So you're getting that large productivity space on your screen. 
but not having to carry around a larger size system. Um, and then sustainability, you will see as a tenant for all things latitude, um, doesn't stop when we get to even our premium products. So this product is being made with 75% low carbon emission and recycled aluminum. Um, and that's in both the A cover, which is the top lid, and the C cover, which is the palm rest or the middle part of the system. Um, we're also using recycled plastics and bio-based materials um, in the system as well. All right, so on the next slide here, um, I want to spend a minute talking about the haptic collaboration touchpad. So um, everybody's familiar with having a click pad or a touchpad on your system. Um, in this case, we've done a couple of things. So we've added customizable haptic feedback, feedback to the touchpad. So this doesn't actually click physically. There's no mechanical click in this touchpad. But when you touch it, you get that haptic feedback that you might be used to seeing on like your cell phone. And that gives you that immersive kind of feeling that you're actually controlling and you get a full kind of experience with the touchpad, um, even if you're not looking at it, for example. Um, but as cool as that experience is, is the collaboration icons you see um, on the left in all white and zoomed in on the right with a couple of them turning red. So in this case, we've added zoom controls to the touchpad that give you the option of turning on and off your video, seeing the messages that are coming in, sharing your screen content and muting or unmuting your microphone, all accessible from your fingertips right in front of you. Um, I know I found myself on uh, multitasking scenarios. I might have two or three displays in front of me. And all of a sudden, somebody's like, hey, Ben, can you turn on your, uh, your, your camera? Or can you share that screen? And I'm fumbling around looking for, you know, which window did I hide my Zoom control behind? And, uh, and so it's really nice to have that in front of your fingertips. You can immediately hit that mute button and get yourself back off of mute without having to find where you might have hidden your Zoom control. Um, so that works with Zoom meetings today. We're working with other um, collaboration and uh, uh, programs to work on adding additional ecosystem to those in the future as well. Um, so a lot of things going on with something like a click pad that is not something you would normally think as a place where you would you know, get that additional functionality. Um, but there's a lot more going on here with 9440. So from a design perspective and a materials perspective, so um, we talked about the Zero Lattice keyboard. They've got those wider keys. Um, we leverage the XPS design. They have a similar um, system on the XPS side, um, but we didn't just take the consumer keyboard and drop it into the commercial box. We changed the spacing between the keys. We changed the draft angle of the keys um, and, and kind of tweaked the overall layout, really trying to provide the most comfortable commercial typing use case. We know that our commercial customers are spending hours and hours working throughout the day and typing on these systems. And this keyboard was really designed to meet the use case of those people um, so they would have that comfortable typing experience all day. Um, the exterior of the system is an ultra premium CNC aluminum uh, in a graphite color. We use premium di diamond cut edges in certain places and really tried to spare um, no lack of attention to detail throughout the entire design of the system. Um, and then all of the displays, it's coming with a QHD plus infinity edge touch panel. Um, it's a two in one system also. So you have a lot of use cases, no matter where you might be working or what content you might be sharing um, that fit into the design of the system. Um, I talked about the 75% recycled aluminum. We're using low carbon emission aluminum for the rest of it. Um, we use bio-based materials in the key board keycaps, and um, we use recycled plastics in a number of places, battery frames, speaker housing, some of the power adapter housings. Um, and I saw somebody mentioned in chat earlier about the packaging. Um, so we are shipping in 100% recycled or renewable packaging. Um, and so really that's the goal of getting the plastics out of the packaging, allow you to single stream recycle the packaging um, so once you're done with that package, you can just drop it into the recycling stream and you don't have to sort out certain things that require special recycling or anything like that. Um, from a security standpoint, uh, the camera has built-in network-based intelligent privacy. So you've got options to protect your screen from visual um, people overlooking what you might be working on. You um, also have built-in safe shutter for peace of mind with your camera. So if you want your camera turned off, that's built into the system. 
And um, of course, we ship with end-to-end -end Dell safe security solutions. So we're not just stopping with what's on your OS, but the entire process throughout. Um, from a collaboration standpoint, on the top right, we talked about the haptic collaboration touchpad, but we don't stop there. So we've got video enhancements, um, improved background blur with dedicated VPU. Um, this device with its top and bottom firing speakers can really truly serve as your PC as a speaker phone experience. So I'm actually working on a 7,000 series system today uh, with no headset, no additional microphone. Like I'm just sitting here and working on my system. I'm letting it do the work as a speaker phone. Um, you could do the same thing here with a 9440 as well. Talked about safe shutter. And of course, Wi-Fi 6E and 5G options are available. So you've got LTE choices, um, even in this level of system. Um, we talked about the seamless haptics feedback on the touchpad, um, the battery saving mini LED. So let me pause and, and ask, you know, kind of in the chat, you don't have to answer, but I'm curious if anybody's heard the difference between traditional backlit LEDs and the mini power saving LEDs that we're using. So traditionally, most computer makers or really all um, have been using these normal LEDs. Uh, we use 13 in our old systems behind the keyboard of the predecessor. And those draw about four watts of power from the system. The new 91 mini LEDs draw about a single watt of power. So that's about a 75% reduction in power draw coming from your backlit keyboard. And what that means from a, from a real world use perspective is that you're saving um, power from the system, which is reducing the amount of drain on the battery, and you're going to get more hours of battery life. Um, we've actually done the calculations, and depending on how much you're typing and how long you're using your backlit um, keyboard throughout the day, you can get up to three hours of additional battery life just by using the power efficient mini LEDs that we're using in the 9440. Um, and then last on performance, uh, the system is coming with Intel Raptor Lake uh, processors all the way up to i7 vPro. You can get up to 64 gigabytes of memory. I saw somebody mention in the chat window about memory choices and upgradability and things like that. So here you're, you're gonna choose at the time of purchase, but you can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X. So you have a lot of scalability and choice when it comes to what level of memory you're looking for up to two terabytes of SSD, and uh, kind of like the security one that Bob mentioned, could be an eight-hour conversation. Dell Optimizer is extremely um, extensive in terms of what it offers, but 9440 is shipping with the latest Dell Optimizer 4.0. Um, with that, I will pause. We're going to do a, a similar run-through on the, the 7000 series next. So here's a quick video to kind of give you a visual of the ultralight and uh, the aluminum products that we have in 7,000. All right, so a couple of things here. So I broke my 7,000 into two slides one on ultralight and one on aluminum. Um, I'm actually holding here in my hand uh, one of the uh, ultralight systems and uh, just kind of showing it around a little bit in the light here, just so you can kind of see um, the color of the system. Um, it's a 13 and 14 inch option. So you've got two screen sizes. We had a 13 inch in last gen. I'm super excited to add a 14 inch option. Um, what, what do we mean when we say ultralight? So 13 inch, um, starts at under one kilogram, lowest weight. Uh, so you have about point, uh, 0 0.98 kilograms. That's about 2.2 pounds. And 14 inch, um, just a hair higher at about 1.06 kilograms, which is about 2.3 pounds. If you haven't lifted a essentially two pound laptop before, um, please find a way to get your hands on one of these. So um, this is an extremely lightweight system. It almost feels like there's nothing on the inside. It's just a shell, um, but it's not. It's a fully featured um, commercial laptop. It meets all of the Dell Latitude um, use cases for um, durability testing and all of the mil spec testing that we run it through, um, even in a super lightweight design. Um, we're using an all magnesium alloy chassis to get that weight down. And we've painted it in a, what we call river paint finish. It's a kind of a, a gray with a bluish tinge to it. 
very like modern sleek color it's one of the things that people have said when they see it that they really love um just like with the 9440 we've got top and bottom firing speakers um this is the best sounding latitude 7000 that we've ever had and all of the 13 and 14 inch ultralights come in 100 percent five megapixel MIPI IR camera so high resolution Got the IR there for Windows Hello and logging yourself in with facial recognition. And um, the BIPI is going to drive your intelligent privacy through Dell Optimizer. Uh, the mini LED backlit keyboard is the same with 7000. So anytime you get backlit keyboard, you're going to get that battery savings that I talked about on the previous slide. Um, we've made improvements to the click pad and the click quality. Um, we also offer more configurability in ultralight this year than we did before. So it was one of our customer asks. We had a number of people that was like, we love ultralight, but we want more options and more things to change. So you now have two battery size choices, um, two display options, um, all 16 by 10, but you have both touch and non-touch up to QHD. Um, we have 4G and 5G options throughout 7000 series. Um, with ultralight, you've got 5G as your uh, LTE or YWAN experience. Um, we ship with Dell Optimizer 4.0, um, a wide range of CPUs. So you've got i5 and i7 all the way up to vPro. You may have caught it on the animation that went by, but there are two USB-A ports on the 14-inch product. Um, we had one port last year on 14-inch 7000s. We've added that second port, so you have additional port flexibility for accessories. Um, we've added a fingerprint reader option, and um, similar with 9000 series, we can go all the way up to 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X. So a lot of configurability, even in a very lightweight um, system. And so you got a lot of mobility and a lot of power. Um, next, I'll do a similar presentation for the aluminum version of 7000. All right, so the aluminum version for 7000, uh, very similar to what you heard in ultralight, a couple of key differences to call out. So instead of the magnesium alloy exterior, we're using 100% stamped aluminum. Um, we launched with standard aluminum and we're actually transitioning to a 50% recycled, low carbon emission aluminum that we'll switch to um, in the next several months. So by the end of summer or something to that extent. Um, so again, trying to drive continued sustainability into all of our products. Um, from a collaboration standpoint, the same uh, best-in-class conferencing experience that we talked about um, previously, top and bottom firing speakers, cameras, you've actually got three camera choices, but they go all the way up to five megapixel, MIPI IR, just like we talked about with ultralight. All the backlit keyboards are still using that mini LED technology. We've increased the size of the click pad and also the quality of the click feel. Um, and so that's an improvement gen over gen. Um, you've got your two battery options, uh, a wide range of panels. So we've got touch screens, we've got non-touch screens, you've got um, a two-in-one option on both the 13 and 14 inch product, um, but all of them are having these class leading narrowest bezels, large screen to body ratios. Um, we have 5G availability throughout 13, 14 and 16. You've got 4G options as well in a number of places. Um, so if you don't need 5G, you've got some choices. Talked about Dell Optimizer. Um, different from Ultralight, which is 100% uh, U15 processors on 14 and 16 inch aluminum, you can actually do U15 or P28, all the way up to P28 i7 vPro. Um, we've got Grade A acoustics. Um, I saw somebody in the in the chat asked about uh, thermals and fan, uh, lap temperatures and fan noise and things like that. So um, we moved all of the fans on 7000 series to the back of the system. And um, I've been personally using a 7340 aluminum system for the last six weeks as my corporate system. Um, it is the quietest and coolest um, Latitude 7000 I've ever used in all of my years at Dell. And I've been here for quite a while. Um, so, um, so very, very good system in terms of thermals and um, performance. 
definitely um, look forward to having people get them in their hands and test them out. We talked about adding that second USB-A port to 14 inch. Um, you have full security choices, everything you'd expect, fingerprint readers, smart card readers, um, and uh, up to 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X. Uh, so with that, I will pause. I'm gonna hand it off to my colleague, Rich. I will go back and check the chat window for any questions I might've missed. And I uh, hope everybody had a, a good time listening to all the exciting things with Latitude 7 and 9. No, I all yours, Rich. Thank you, Ben. Um, so I guess I'll do a quick voiceover while we're looking at the 5000 series, it's our 13 inch product. Uh, again, just want to thank everybody for uh, joining. I see we've got folks from all over the country and literally all over the world. So do appreciate everyone joining in. Uh, my name is Rich Evranek. I am the lead for 5000 series on the Latitude team for launch. And I'll also be covering the 3000 series in addition to the 5000 series. So uh, again, thanks for your uh, coming to um, spend some time with us. So this, what you were just seeing is actually our 13 inch, which is our smallest and thinnest of the 5000 series. Um, so really, you know, this, it's a little bit of a, a mouthful, but you know, I characterized it, you know, 5000 really focused on productivity, speed, sustainability, security, intelligence. And you couple that with the smallest mainstream business laptop chassis, basically your length and the width. Um, so, and what we'll be focusing on in 5,000 and 3,000 years, really what's new this generation with the products that we just launched. So, so I'll start over on the left side and kind of go in a counterclockwise direction. So latest Intel, so we're 100% Intel uh, CPUs on 5,000 series. So 13th generation, um, we offer the U-series CPUs up to i7 V Pro. That's available on our 13, 14, and 15. And we also offer upsell Intel P28 C or P series CPUs, again, up to i7 V Pro offered on the 13, I'm sorry, on the 14 and the 15. Uh, in terms of form factor, similar to 7000 series, we offer both a, a clamshell and a two in one option on the 13 inch. Uh, again, this generation 14 and 15 inch will be solely clamshells in terms of form factors. And so, you know, coupled with the next generation CPUs, we also offer on 13 inch, we have LP DDR5 is low power. We're moving from DDR4 to low power DDR5. That's socketed, I'm sorry, that's soldered down memory on the 13 inch. And then we offer socketed memory on the 14 and the 15 inch, either an entry DDR4 option or an upsell DDR5 option, which we coupled with the P-series CPUs. In terms of discrete graphics, we'll, um, be offering discrete graphics on 14 as well as 15. Um, we already were offering discrete on 15 inch, but the addition of 14 inch is new this generation on the 5000 series. And you look at intelligence and really that when it's more or less synonymous with the Dell optimizer that we offer. And this is a portfolio wide comment. I think it's been called out by um, my colleagues already. Same on 5000, we'll launch with the latest generation Dell optimizer. There are updates to Dell Optimizer. We'll probably have some throughout the life cycle of the products. And so you will actually get the option to upgrade to those next later generations if they do occur during the life cycle of this product. So just want to kind of emphasize, you'll always have access to the latest generation for Dell Optimizer. Um, design in terms of the front of screen, not a whole lot of design changes that will stand out to you when you look at the uh, generation versus uh, this current generation versus the previous generation. Really a couple of the things that we have is we do have a new premium click pad. It's thicker and has better tactile experience. And on 14 inch, we're going from rear and side venting to only rear venting. So your 13 and your 14 inch will only have rear venting. Um, gives you a lot more room for your ports among other things and just kind of looks nicer. 15 inch will still have rear and side venting just to be able to, the way it was architected to cool that bigger machine, we still will have to go with rear and side venting on the 15 inch. So a couple of the other things, we have the best in class screen to body ratios. That's basically how much screen you get to the actual, the size of the uh, actual chassis that you're looking at. We'll offer on the 13 inch, as I mentioned, we're gonna have a two in one option in addition to the clamshell. Every screen size will have touch options as well as an FHC non-touch 400 nit option that's a low battery that um, offers low blue light or comfort view. 
as well as battery life-saving panels on that upsell option. Thermal and audio enhancements. So a good deal of the in investments that we did this generation are focused on thermals and audio enhancements. Kind of been alluded to differently or with the previous uh, presentations. So we're gonna have cooler temperatures and quieter operation. Really what that's driven by is we just have, you know, larger fans and larger optimized thermal fin design. So cooler and, and also in terms of the loudness, it's gonna be better. And then the third thing I want to call out, you know, separate from the thermal being quieter from a thermal perspective, the we're have, we actually have audio improvements across all the screen sizes. And that's just the loudness, the crispness and the clarity of the audio. So I did bring that into the same section here, but I do want to just call out that we have both audio improvements unto themselves, as well as the thermal audio improvements, which we have are just a quieter operation. Collaboration improvements. So our entry cameras now are gonna be FHD, full high definition versus HD. And that's the same thing on the panels. So there's no more HD camera and HD panel entry option where actually your standard option is FHD. For the cameras, we'll still offer set, the first upsell option, which is your FHD plus your IR camera if you want to add security there. Currently, the previous generation was HD and IR cameras. And then the Second upsell option, the third camera option, FHD camera, IR camera, coupled with your intelligent privacy, which is your express sign in there. They're synonymous when describing the differences in the cameras. Connectivity, we've actually expanded 5G wireless WAN to all screen sizes for 5000 series. We only had it on our 5531 in last generation. In addition, we're moving for more cost conscious customers we still want wireless WAN, we're upgrading from 4G CAT 16 to 4G CAT, I'm sorry, from 4G CAT 9 to 4G CAT 16. And again, that offering is across 13, 14 and 15 inch, including the two in one form factors. Wi-Fi 6E will be your standard wireless LAN offering. And then really one of the other things that, or maybe the most prominent thing the 5000 series is becoming known for is really leading the way for the portfolio and really in large part for Dell in sustainability. So 5000 series, one of the reasons we've designated 5000 series as the lead program for sustainability and expansion of sustainability is it's, it's the most uh, volume. You know, we really, that's where your volume driver is, particularly on the 14 inch. So we want to expand this, the reach of latitude using the highest volume platforms. That's one of the reasons that we've selected 5000 series to kind of lead the way. Uh, some of the things new this generation, there's expanse, expansion of post-consumer recyclable content into our LCD bezels you have on the screen, bordering the screen, your palm rest, speaker enclosure and inner frame. So I do just want to emphasize that that's an expansion. We already were the most sustainable of the Latitude products, and that's the things that we've specifically expanded this generation. In addition, the recyclable and bio-based material has been added to our bottom doors, which is basically the bottom of the system. And what this means from a calculation perspective is an overall growth of sustainable material as a percentage of total plastics, not necessarily the total system, but total plastics from 11% to 18%. So 64% increase in the actual weight content of sustainable plastic material generation over generation. Uh, I do see Marcel has, do we support 5G on the latitude? I missed the last one. What was, can you, Marcel, can you repeat that question? It just got bumped up in the chat. So we do, yeah, 5G's, I, I think the question was, are we going to have it on 5540? And that's correct, as well as all the actually the 5,000 platforms this generation. So I have about six minutes before we get into Q&A. So let's go over to the 3,000 series. Really one of the things that you, you see on 3,000, affordable yet powerful commercial class notebooks. So a little bit different on the enhancements to the CPUs and memory. So um, like all of our products, we are going to the third Intel 13th generation CPUs. In this case, we have U-series CPUs up to i7, but we don't have the vPro option on 3000 series like we do on 5, 7, and 9. Um, also going to see blazing fast solder down LPDDR5 memory on the 13 inch. Um, one thing I, I did want to mention on the, on the 5000 series 13 inch, we're up to 32 gigs. 
gigabytes um, on the 3000 series 13 inch will top out at 16 gigabytes. Uh, similar to 5000 series, you've got socketed DDR4 memory on 1415, so it's upgradable. We don't have the DDR5 option that you'll see on, on 5000 series. Also having, we have NVIDIA discrete graphics options on the 14 and the 15 inch. Um, same call out on the, the Dell optimizer. You always have the latest gen Dell optimizer as we will with a portfolio. Uh, do have some, some ID designs actually on 14 and 15, um, smaller. So we're actually getting smaller and I mean, XY or length and width generation, gen over gen on your footprint on the 14 and the 15 inch getting a bit smaller. You're gonna have a new refined laser texture with soft, soft charcoal cover for 14 and 15. Gonna continue with the same painted color, Titan gray, which for me, I kind of looks silver, painted plastic on the 13 inch, both the clamshell and the two in one options. Um, like 5000 series, 3000 is gonna enjoy improved commercial class, actually keyboard featuring longer key travel. Late, I, I should. I mean, mis kind of misspoke a bit there. So on 5000 series, we actually have the improvements to the click pad. On 3000 series, it's the keyboard itself. You're gonna have longer key travel, laser etched key prints for durability, added mic mute button, all screen sizes. Uh, in terms of collaboration, 3000 series also going to have an active touch screen with pen support on the 13 inch on your two in one option. We have two camera options here on 3000. As I mentioned, you have the entry HD camera, then you have an upsell FHD IR camera offerings. Again, that's on 13, 14, and 15. What we don't have on 3000 series that we have on 5, 7, and 9 is we don't have that express sign in intelligent privacy option. So that's if you need that, we have got the 5, the 7, and the 9 series to offer you. A new commercial class touchpad featuring quieter and more premium clicks. It's a bit thicker and that's on all screen sizes. So they've also bumped up in terms of the click pad or touchpad quality. Connectivity, a little bit different. You've got Wi-Fi 6 and 6E for your Wi-Fi. Do have an upgraded wireless WAN option. You have 4G CAT 16. Don't offer 5G on the 3000 series. Um, productivity. New commercial class batteries, and really what that means, you know, moving from previous generations on 3000 series from the consumer class batteries is now we offer the long life cycle, okay, long life cycle or long calendar life battery capability. Formerly didn't offer that on 3000 series. So specifically they're moving to the 42 watt hour and 54 watt hour is your upsell battery, same batteries that we have on 5000 series. So I think we've got two minutes before Q&A, so I'll stop here for any questions, I guess specifically for five and three before we open it up for a free-for-all for any questions that you may have. I apologize, I really haven't had a chance to look at the, um, the chat window, but as Ben mentioned, I'll also go back and look at what's in the window for any of the, the questions on five and three. And thank you again. I think we've covered the chat window pretty well, Rich. Uh, Thank you, so. everybody. C certainly to the audience. I mean, there's a lot of people here. There's been a lot of lot of chat in the chat window. Um, if there was anything that was missed or additional questions, um, anything that hasn't been covered, uh, yeah, as Rich said, we'll kind of open up the floor for mic or chat window questions to come up. Jerry, I see you mentioned something about multiple monitors. I assume you're talking about external monitor support off memory. If I'm not mistaken, I think the new Raptor Lake architecture supports up to four displays. I think that could be three external plus the onboard display. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's correct. It used to be three. I think it goes to four now. I think my recollection is the same. Yep. Ah. Uh, Docking question is a good one. Uh, we don't have Sid. We don't have Sid with us Sid, today, our, our, our docking master. master. But um, we do have a new uh, Dell uh, WD22 dock series that's out. Um, that would be the recommended Hero dock. So we, we do have dock options. Um, the previous WD19 docking and then the new WD22 ones. 22. So Victor, you mentioned nine system reviewing CPUs architecture. Um, 
So yeah, we're we're hundred percent Intel at this point. Is there anything further you wanted to comment on that? While we're waiting on Victor, um, you know, Steve just had a question about Windows Hello and that that's supported. You just want to ensure that. Yes. I always think of Lionel Richie when I say hello, you know. <laughs> I'm aging myself, I think, a bit, but. Help Steve like that answer. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that music video back when MTV played videos. Yeah, but now we've got some follow up from Victor. Um, yeah, you guys want to take that one? The, let me scroll up here. Uh, he I'm said, you know, my, yeah, my org ARM. has decided to move away um, from next gen laptops and will be powered in ARM. So it was, is that, Victor, meaning the type of products that would perhaps launch in calendar year 2024? or those that are launching this year's in 2023. MTV played videos, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I, I, I can't comment too, too much, but you know, Dell is always looking at different options on CPUs. Um, yeah, I, I dropped a similar comment in the chat earlier. I mean, the I mean, uh, the team you have here is the launch team, so we we get the result of what the planning team, uh, you know, decides on. And uh, but they, I know that they are constantly looking at you know all options, um, you know, every single year constantly. And uh, you know what comes in this generation is what we presented today. What comes next year, we'll wait and see. So um, there's always new things that they're looking at, and you know whether that's processor or battery saving technology like the mini LED that we're first to market on. They're, they're always looking at each of those um, technologies and uh, seeing what makes the most sense for the roadmap. So we'll see you again next year and we'll see what it looks like then. I just saw a question on the pop open options, things like SSD and memory. So we, we don't have that this generation, but it, it really is a good follow on from what Ben just said. Um, so are there, Jack, do we, do we have planning sessions set up? That, that's, that's a great, question point to raise during planning. We can certainly relay that to the planning team. Um, not in this generation, um, next generation, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not aware right now of moving to that, but yeah, planning team could confirm. Yeah, there's no planning sessions on the calendar, but we will definitely um, get the word across to the planning team and set something up with this feedback because um, right, this is the feedback that the planning team's looking for. This is what they want. So we will definitely, uh, Wilson, thank you for saying that, right? We will get that across. And then Caesar had a question. Um, does the device have DAAS? DAAS. What's, what's the D stand what, for? Yeah. I yes, assume AAS is as a service, um, can, yeah, desktop as a service, uh, laptop as a service. I don't know. I, I do believe yeah, we have, um, some service type offerings, but it's separate from the hardware side of what we're talking about here today. Yeah, that'd be good to know. Yeah, it might be a, a good, uh, for future uh, sessions, it might be a good one to do uh, as a service, you know, X, XXX as a service, you know, all things service related, it might be a good deep dive topic. Yeah, we've definitely got that noted down. Um, so community, right, if you're here today, pay attention um we will we will get something as a service launched up to do a deep dive on that so we can cover all of those questions yeah whether whether it's service uh, support support side or leasing um, as robert mentioned in the the window there um there's a lot of things always going on in the services org so they take the hardware that we've just launched and then they do lots of fun stuff with it so it'd be a good topic Absolutely. I'm just I'm scrolling through chat to see if we got any more questions coming through. Uh, looks like Brett has one. If there's a newer type of memory, uh, it might have already been no, answered by Nico. Oh, no. Nico answered Caesar's question. Um, yes. Is there going to be a newer type of memory format coming in the future that can be used in latitudes uh, without them being soldered in? 
So yeah, just I'll just say on, on 5,000 series and, and 3,000 series, actually the only form factor that we do have soldered down memory is on 13 inch. So 14 and 15 are socketed, so they're upgradable. Um, that I believe will continue. I, I'm fairly certain looking at, you know, just the correspondence I've had with planning on 5,000 series that will still at least next year. And quite honestly, if I were betting, I'd say we're gonna have socketed memory on the 14 and the 15 inch for, for quite a while going forward. Um, the industry is kind of moving from DDR4 to DDR5. DDR5, again, speaking specifically for socketed memory, still a little bit more costly. It's hard to predict when they will, you know, kind of basically become at parity and then DDR4 will go away. So at least, you know, what we're looking at at latitude this generation and next, it's really the LP, the low power DDR5 memory exclusively on 13 inch. And then the DDR4 and DDR5 next generation, I'm, I'm fairly certain we'll probably move to strictly DDR5 as the cost differential collapses and you get them, the, it's basically, it's a faster memory, um, much faster speeds. And, um, you know, as I said, it's gonna be at cost parity eventually like these things work out and that's when that'll become our sole offer. So that's over the next couple of years at least. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, Ben, I saw you added a little more clarity to that. Is there anything, um, you know, more you wanted to add other than socketed? No, I mean, like Rich said, so socketed is still available. Um, 5000 series is the the king of uh, configurability and, you know, um, all of that. So uh, that's the place to go to for sure. Um, that said, I mean, seven and nine series, they, they offer high levels of configurability on memory at time of purchase. So you can go from you know, eight or 16, all the way up to, you know, 32, 64, you know, we're running high speed, you know, high megahertz kind of stuff. And so kind of the goal there is to give such a high performance of the LPDDR5 and 5X uh, memory choices that, you know, the re reduction and the need to, to later on upgrade it is, is there. Um, I, I don't know anything on timing for like the cam modules or self-repairing SSDs and some of the, some of the other, some of the self-repairing memory and stuff like that that's out there. But uh, I'm sure that the stuff that starts with precision will make its way to latitude at some point. It's usually a cost question. We don't want to burden the, the latitude um, broader public with um, higher cost stuff until it's ready for that level of production. Yeah, but just as an extra note to the community, um, we did do a deep dive on CAM versus Sodom uh, a couple months ago, maybe even in nice. 2021. So if you want to take a look at that, that's on our YouTube page. There's a whole deep dive webinar about it. And if you have more questions, right, let the community know, send an email to member services, um, and we can even schedule, you know, a part two deep dive on CAM versus Sodom if that's something the community wants. You guys are giving us a lot of topics for future webinars today. So thank you. Yeah, love it. Love the engagement. Appreciate it all. Yeah, I've seen a lot of in kind of a consensus in the last few comments of the the um, preference for socketed versus soldered memory. So definitely take that and relay that. To... Yeah, we will. That's uh, right. This is this is why we do this to get this feedback yep. from the communities. <laughs> Great if we could get the partner premier site improved. Awesome. See, I hear that feedback as well. Uh, thank you, David. We did do, I think last month, um, where we covered a lot of the Premiere and TechDirect, that area. So there is um, some exciting announcements that were within that webinar. So you can head to the YouTube there. I believe Liz is putting in our YouTube channel um, and getting that circulated. So a lot of these topics, you know, we've covered pretty recently, so we might be a little ahead of you, but you guys, once again, are giving us a lot to think about, maybe going to part twos um, for a lot of these different topics. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, honestly, it makes my life easier. It makes all of our lives easier when you pick the topics for us and we don't have to guess what you want. Yeah, thank you, Wilson, appreciate it. Um, so, right, we've got about five minutes left. So if the community has any more questions, right, we've got the team here. This is your chance. So if there's any more questions, please give it to us. Um, we'll wait a couple minutes, see if more are coming in. Yep. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> um, so if there's any more questions, right, 
this is it. If not, well, we'll start wrapping up here in a minute. Yep, looks like looks like we're done. Um, so I just want to say, you know, specifically, thank you, Bob. Um, thank you, Rich. Thank you, Ben. This was awesome, super informative. The community loved it. Yep, as you can see, everyone saying thank you so 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 much. Um, Liz, thank you for sending out that survey. We will also send this via email. So check out your emails. We want your feedback. You know, if there's topics you want, that is that is a great space. We've documented them through this of different topics you want for future webinars. But um, if there are other topics, right, put it in there. We'd love your thoughts. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and if that's everything, right, you know, thank you. Thank you, community. Thank you, speakers. Um, this has been an awesome hour for all of us. So if there's nothing else, we'll close out. Make sure you fill out that survey, check your emails. Um, you know, Rich, Bob, Ben, any closing comments? Appreciate the time. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.